So, some people think that style and fashion is synonymous. But personal style goes far beyond what brands you wear or what clothes you like. And it really tells your story without saying a word. Style goes far beyond, you know, the, the nice clothes. Thank and you. it really Thank includes you. aspects of, you know, what makes us who we are. I mean, I can look in the crowd right now and see a bunch of people that, you know, some stylish, some maybe not so stylish. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I mean, at the end of the day, I can, you know, make some assumptions about everyone. And I'm sure you can do the same about me. It may be wrong or it may be right. Hopefully it's right. Sure. But at the same time, the point is that style can dictate your persona and the way you're perceived to the outside world. Rewriting history with a passion to communicate. Stratica uses style as a narrative to not only create a new identity, but to also cover topics such as fashion, music, art, culture, but also socioeconomic issues. So before that, we had to find our voice. And myself and Travis were just product of the internet, in a sense. So we were born and raised on the internet, and we found these inspirational photos from Howard in the 1950s. And once we saw them, we were super intrigued, because we were like, number one, we've never seen photos like this in book form or textbook. Number two, if you put these photos in color, they could very much be so today. So we're like, let's create an idea around this and share this information with like-minded individuals. So we created this editorial called Black Ivy. Essentially, Black Ivy stemmed from Black Ivy League, which are HBCUs, such as Howard, Morehouse, Spelman. And we thought to ourselves, let's get our friends together, 20 guys, and let's create this editorial. But we were from the Bronx, and there's no Ivy League schools anywhere close. So we're like, damn. So where are we going to go? We can't, we're not enrolled in Princeton or Yale. So we found City College in Harlem. And City College was like a gem in a sense because it was in our neighborhood. It was something we could appreciate. But at the same time, a lot of people thought we shot this at Princeton, Yale, all the Ivy League schools. So we're like, all right, we got away with this. So we show up to the campus all decked out. Everybody has their bow ties and like pants cuffed. And we forget, like, we don't even have permission to shoot here. So we all show up there and we're just standing around. And security comes up to us and he's like, um, what are you guys doing? Like, I don't get it. And we're like, we're doing a photo shoot. And he's like, no, you guys don't have permission. And we just felt super down. We're like, damn, what are we going to tell these other 20 guys? Like, shit. So they come up to us and they're like, you know what? We're going to let you guys shoot, but we're also going to give you guys a classroom to shoot inside of. So we're like, oh, cool. So at, the, at that point, we were really inspired that and fired up that this all happened at the same time. So a lot of these guys are just everyday guys. Nobody's a model. Nobody's, I mean, some guys are good looking naturally. But <laughs> nobody's a model. Um, everybody's like everyday people, singers, professors, writers. And we really want people to see this editorial and say to themselves, I could be that guy or I could be that guy instead yes. of heightened expectations. Yes. And that's how we birthed the idea of Black Ivy. And, you know, the feedback was phenomenal. I mean, how could you not like these guys, right? <laughs> but four years ago, this was a new, this was something new within our own communities because 20 young black guys dressed this way on a college campus in New York City was just not a common sight. And this, this aesthetic was just not something that was, you know, more familiar with someone that's pretending to like the masculine, um, you know, genre or whatnot. So it really brought up a bunch of questions with, that we had to deal with, with male sexuality and being different and wanting to express ourselves and being comfortable with that. And, you know, from, from that point on, we realized that we always wanted to touch on controversial issues because that really got people thinking and really started the conversation. So keeping that in mind, we started, you know, still building on our style, still trying to do original editorial content, and we started working on our, you started playing around with our hair, you know, because your hair is like one of the focal points for your style. So we found a bunch of images and inspiration from people like Basquiat, Steel Pulse, Bob Marley, just to name a few, and we were really inspired by their hair, and, you know, their hair was like their focal point for their style. They were represented by their hair, the way they embraced it. And these are hairstyle that, hairstyles that, in, you know, from a more societal point of view, it's, it wasn't you know, popular or deemed something that's tidy or clean. So we wanted to really showcase this and bring pride to it. So we created an editorial called Crown. And Crown basically means, obviously, the crown of your head, but also being a crown or victor or ownership of your own self-expression. So we shot this editorial. So we got 12 of our friends, all with cool hair, 
and we shot this editorial on a white background. So where Black Ivy was, you know, in an Ivy setting, really giving you a feeling for an aesthetic and whatnot, we really wanted this just to be about the person and their hair. Them as an art piece, them embracing their hair, and this, is, this was the result. And it's, it's amazing because the feedback from Crown was also kind of an aspirational tutorial. People started to email us about how we got our hair a certain way. But when I went home, my parents were like, we, we hate your hair. I'm like, damn. <laughs> but, like, I failed them in life just based off my hair. And I was like, she doesn't know in 2014 the top knot is trendy. Like, she don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> after our parents, I mean, we're, I'm a West African, Travis is West Indian. And our parents just want us to assimilate into American culture as much as possible without sticking out. But well, unfortunately, like, we're already black. We, we stick out wherever we go. Um, <laughs> so with Crown, it was, a, it was a way to kind of express our self-expression through hair solely, and Black Ivy was being closed. So at this point, we always use reference as far as inspirations we found on the internet. And we thought to ourselves, we might as well come up with our own idea in a sense, come up with a story from A to Z, and this is where we really use our creative chops, in a sense, or imagination to come up with an editorial called Slum Flower. Can everybody just say Slum Flower for me? Slum Flower. Well, I got a whole TED audience to say one thing. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. But um, Slum Flower, basically slum as in urban, gritty, and flower as in a plant life, it had a lot of terms and like just interchangeable just kind of themes between plant life and human life. So watering, sunlight, nurturing, these are all kind of aspects we played with. And we were really inspired by, you know, the projects and low-income housing because, you know, it's something that we grew up around. And we found, you know, the sense of beauty in that, and it was not necessarily something that was, you know, out in the, the media as, as a place that's, you know, beautiful or, or whatnot. So we did this editorial called Slum Flower. We, again, we got like 20 of our friends, familiar faces from Black Ivy, and had them all style themselves in a suit, and we shot this in Chelsea Project. We shot it in Chelsea. We yeah. couldn't like, afford to lose our lives in the Bronx, so we are like, yeah. let's, <laughs> let's shoot this in Chelsea and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. But <laughs> the same effect. So, so we shot it in um, Chelsea Projects, and there's a reason why everyone has on a suit, because we realized that there's a lot of you know, positive stereotypes associated with the suit, right? It makes you look tidy clean, smart, and make you look good. So we wanted to juxtapose that with the projects and something that has a total opposite stereotype, you know, a place that's untidy, unsafe, and whatnot. So this is the result of that. And it's really interesting because, I mean, this editorial is really personal to me because my nephew's featured in it, so that's the little kid in it. And we use the kid as a surface level interest just because we know people love kids and also Kids are blank slates, kids are innocent, they're awesome. But it raised a lot of questions like, why is there no women in this? Why are all these guys dressed in suits? Why is it in the projects? And when we create projects, we, we kind of seek out to not answer the questions, but to, but to ask them. And growing up in the Bronx, it's one of the most populated places with project buildings. And being around that environment, we really wanted to kind of flip everything upside down and see what people think when you kind of change the picture. Yes. So in the end, we all, when we started Street Etiquette, we did it because we felt like there was a void to be filled and we felt like there was no platform for us to tell our story from our own perspective. And we started Street Etiquette as a, as a vehicle to you know, tell, tell our own stories through a more artistic and creative way, using style as, as a reference point. And in the end, all we hope is that people can do the same and see style as a powerful tool for them to tell their own stories and touch on the topics that are near and dear to them. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it.